You've been stuck in a job that drains you or in a relationship that leaves you emotionally exhausted. But when someone says, why don't you just leave? You feel that sharp stab of fear, like they're pushing you off a cliff. And here's the worst part, it's not love, it's not loyalty, it's your brain going, hey, I know the situation, so it must be safe. Yep, your brain can be that treacherous. Number one, your brain mistakes routine for safety. Your mind didn't evolve to seek happiness, it evolved to seek patterns. It prefers predictable over healthy. That's why people stay in toxic jobs, homes, or relationships, just because they already know how they work work, even if something's hurting you. If it's familiar, your brain activates the safe mode simply because you've survived it before. It's like living in a leaky house, but refusing to move out because you already know where to put the buckets. Your comfort zone might be a pit, but since it's your pit, leaving feels terrifying. Number two, your brain ignores what it doesn't want to see. Ever looked everywhere for your keys, only to realize they were in your hand, or talk to someone who said, did you see that back there? And you literally saw nothing. That's inattentional blindness, and it happens every day. Your brain doesn't see everything. It only sees what it thinks is important. If something doesn't fit the narrative, it just deletes it from your awareness. It's like having an internal editor who crops out parts of reality to keep you focused. Sounds harmless? Now think about all the red flags flags you missed in someone because your attention was stuck on the good stuff or the moments people steamrolled you in a conversation and you didn't even notice. You're not dumb. Your brain just filters out anything that clashes with what it already believes. Perception isn't objective, it's selective, and sometimes the things you don't see are the ones that hurt you the most. Number three, your brain can create memories that never happened. Not everything you remember actually happened hard pill to swallow, but science has confirmed it. Memory is editable every time you access it. It's not a saved file. It's more like a word doc that keeps getting rewritten. Worse, your brain can generate false memories. You might remember something you never experienced or recall seeing someone who wasn't even there. People swear they witnessed events they didn't. They remember conversations that never happened. And the creepiest part? Those memories feel real. They're not lies, they're glitches. Your memory isn't a camera, it's a narrator. And sometimes, a terrible screenwriter. That's why people argue over things that happened when they only happened in their head. And yes, you've done it too, we all have. Remembering something doesn't make it true, it's just an echo. Number four, your brain makes up explanations so you don't feel dumb. Ever heard someone say, I knew that was going to happen right after it happened? That's called hindsight bias. Your brain hates uncertainty and it really hates feeling out of control. So after something unexpected happens, it rewrites the story. Suddenly you saw it coming, even if you were completely clueless. It's not about lying, it's about protecting your ego. It also happens when you justify past decisions you're not proud of. Bought something useless? Well, I might use it someday forgave someone who betrayed you again. They were changing. I could tell stayed somewhere you weren't happy. At least I learned something. Sometimes, yes, you did learn something. Other times, you're just putting makeup on your pain so it doesn't sting as much. Self-deception isn't always a trap. Sometimes it's a bandage. Number five, your brain turns anxiety into physical symptoms. You feel strange, your heart's racing, you can't breathe, your hands going numb. Your brain goes, what if this is serious? You Google it, now you're more terrified than before. You go to the doctor and they say, it's not physical, it's anxiety. Your brain can simulate illnesses. It can cause pain, dizziness, tingling, blurry vision without any medical cause. Just pure nervous system overdrive. Your brain doesn't know the difference between an actual lion and a tense meeting with your boss. It hits the same panic button, adrenaline, cortisol, hypervigilance, 
But since you can't run or fight, your body just turns it all into symptoms. It's like your body is screaming, something's wrong, but doesn't know what. And instead of resting, you panic more, which creates more symptoms, which creates more panic. You're not broken, you're overwhelmed, and your body is begging for help the only way it knows how. Number six, your brain pretends you're fine. When you're not some days, you're fully functional. You talk, work, answer messages, maybe even laugh, but deep down, you're falling apart. This is called functional emotional dissociation. Instead of processing all the pain, your brain switches to autopilot. It's a survival mechanism. It's like your mind saying, I can't deal with this right now, so let's just fake being okay. And it does it so well. And even you don't notice, but your body does. You can't sleep. You you eat weirdly, you get distracted easily, your chest feels tight, you're not overreacting, you're not being dramatic, you're holding in so much that even your brain is afraid to feel it all at once. Sometimes the biggest lie isn't the one you tell others, it's the one you tell yourself. And it looks like efficiency, productivity, or calm, but deep down, it's emotional silence. And that drains you more than anything else. Number seven, your brain alters reality to protect you from fear. Some experiences are so intense, so painful, or so overwhelming. Your brain simply distorts them. It fragments the memory, deletes parts, fills in the blanks with what it thinks happened. This doesn't only happen with big traumas. It can show up during moments that overwhelm you. A brutal fight, an accident, a devastating phone call. Sometimes you forget entire parts. Or you feel like it happened to someone else or you remember it like a badly edited movie. That's called protective dissociation. It's like a selective blackout your brain uses to keep you from falling apart. Is it confusing? A lot? Is it abnormal? Not at all. It's just an extreme defense mechanism. Your brain isn't perfect, but it wants you alive. And sometimes, the only way it knows how to keep you going is by telling you a version of the story that you can survive. Even if it's not entirely accurate, even if it leaves you feeling hollow, even if it makes you doubt your own memory, that's your mind saying, that was too much. Let's just blur it out, number eight. Your brain makes you feel guilty for resting. You're at home. You take an hour to do nothing. You put on a show, stretch out on the couch, and then, guilt. Shouldn't you be doing something productive? You're wasting time. That little voice, that's not you. That's your brain raised in a culture of hyper productivity, a brain that sees rest as failure. Your body is exhausted, but your mind has been trained to feel shame when you're not hustling, like every minute without stress is somehow betraying the system. But rest is doing something. It's repair, it's survival. So if your brain makes you feel bad for pausing, maybe the problem isn't that you're resting too much. Maybe you've been pushing too hard for way too long. Have you seen yourself in any of these mental traps? Tell us in the comments, even if it only happened once. And if you want to understand more about how your brain works, even when it feels like it's working against you, subscribe, drop a like, and hit the bell. This channel is your space to discover how truly fascinating your brain really is. See you in the next video.